we have an arrogant person who have been begging to try to debate with me and with Sam Shimon about the oneness of Allah, Tawheed. Now, according to your Sunni tradition, because the Quran is Kalam Allah, it's one of the sifat, the attributes of Allah, so it's uncreated, right? It's uncreated, that's correct. It's okay. the words of Allah. So is the Quran Allah? Of course not. The Quran is the words of okay, Allah. Okay, so good, good, good. We're great. Do the math for me. You just said the Quran is uncreated and it's not Allah. That's too uncreated. Allah is not created, of course. The Quran is not created. How many is course. that? Yes, there's two. But I thought you said Tawheed. You just admit two. That has nothing to do with Tawheed. I said Allah is not created and the Quran is not created. And you said two, but Tawheed is one, right? Tawheed means there's only one God worthy of worship. And what makes God God if not that he's uncreated? What makes God God? If he's not uncreated. God, Can God you have something other than God that's uncreated? No, everything is created. But you just said the Quran is uncreated. That means the Quran is your ilah, it's God. The Quran is the speech of Allah, so it's not created. So now, anything, is the speech of Allah... Anything that is an attribute of Allah is not created. Okay, but is it's the speech of Allah separate from Allah or inseparable from Him? It's His attribute that He can speak. Is it separate he, from he Him speak. or inseparable? Now you're getting into a very detailed point that only someone who has a lot of knowledge about... Yeah, but you said you're going to mop the floor with me. This. When you said yes. you're going to mop the floor with yes. me, that means you're knowledgeable. So now mop the floor with me. I'm going to give you the mop and the bucket start mopping me. So is it okay. separate from Allah or is not separate from Allah? It's his attribute, like his seeing. Let it answer my question. Hearing, is the attribute separate from You're not his answering knowledge, it. For example. You're not answering the question. You think you are. I'm going to try it again. Is that attribute separate from God or you can't separate it from him? That is a very detailed question. It needs a lot of No, give, me, give me a time. detailed answer. I'm, I'm, I got all night. Give me a detailed answer. Go ahead. I can give you a detailed answer. You can't? I can't. I'm okay. not going to, I'm not going to get into that. Okay. All right. I, I want to stick to the basics. Okay. That's well. the basics is that the Quran is the speech of Allah. It's uncreated. And this is basics. This is your basic Islamic theology as a Sunni. Let's now talk about the Ruh. Do you believe the spirit is Gabriel? Oh, Jibril is an angel. Oh, yeah, but who's the Ruh, the spirit then? Ruh Jibril is the angel referred to as the Ruh. Okay. So the you spirit. believe that Gabriel is a spirit then, right? Yes. Can you show me in the Quran where it says Gabriel is the spirit and the spirit is Gabriel? I can't. Say it again. I can't show you that. Since you can't show me that, can you open up your Quran now? Go to Surah An Nahl, 16, verse 2. Read that for me. He descends the angels and the Ruh, the spirit, from his command. Okay, now then, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Gabriel is an angel, right? Yes. Here you have the angel separate from the spirit. So if Gabriel is an angel, that means he's part of the angels that come down. But the spirit is separate from them. So how can Gabriel be the spirit? So because it says the spirit after the angels does not mean that the spirit cannot be an angel. Prove that an angel can be a spirit. Where does the Quran say angels are spirits? The Quran doesn't say the angels are spirits. Okay, good. It so, says right here, it's, it says, the angels descend the rule. By the spirit, right? Yeah. Good. So that means the spirit are not the angels, but they descend by the spirit. Okay, you're not going to interpret the Quran for us. Well, we have scholars who interpret it for us. No, well, what's your point? That's well, what hold on, hold on. Your you, can, you can't tell me you're scholars because your scholars are not prophets. They're not messengers. They don't receive wahi. I don't care what some scholars says some years later who do not receive revelation. The Quran is supposed to be revelation and your, the sunnah of your prophets is supposed to be re revelation, not your scholars. So you can stick with your scholars. I want you to prove it from your Quran and your sunnah. So you can appeal to any scholar you want, but even the same scholars for the same eye will give you more than one interpretation. Okay, so that's one verse where the spirit and the angels are not the same. Now go to chapter 97 of the Quran, verse 4. In it descend the angels and the spirit by the leave of their Lord with every command. Here again, the angels are not the spirit. The spirit are not angels. They're two separate groups. Okay, let me tell you what the explanation of that is. On what basis are you going to tell me? Uh, do you receive Wahi? No, I have a book, though. It's called the Tafsir that, Ibn Kathir. Have you heard of okay, it? Okay, but Ibn Kathir, who comes 700 years after your prophet, was a student of Ibn Taymiyyah. Did he have Ilham and Wahi? Was he inspired? Was John and Matthew and Luke inspired? According to your Quran, yes. Don't change the subject. Don't do the tap dance because you're the, you the subject? You're, you're the only saying, Muslim that would tell me Ibn Kathir is inspired. So wait, wait. I want to hear you. Are you Say to everyone. Can you ask any questions? Is that how this is going to well, no, hold on. You're changing the subject. You ran. I will let the Quran answer to you that John is inspired because according to Surah Al-Maida and Sirat Rasulullah, John wrote down the gospel that God gave to Jesus. In fact, you're going to agree with me. Your Quran says in chapter 7, verse 157, that your prophet is prophesied in the gospel that is with them. Where is that prophecy of your prophet in the gospel? What gospel prophesied your prophet? What gospel prophesied my prophet? Chapter 7. Chapter 7. I'm now going to change the subject with you because it got too hot for you to handle because you're going to mop the floor with me. Chapter 7, verse 157. 
7, 157, it says, they will find in the Torah and the gospel with them a prophecy of the unlettered prophet, the prophet who is Ummi, in the Torah and the gospel that's with them, meaning at the time of Muhammad, the Christians had the gospel that had a prophecy of the unlettered, illiterate prophet. What gospel prophesied your prophet? Because you believe that's Muhammad, right? Yes. So what gospel did the Christians have at the time of Muhammad that had a prophecy of your prophet? It's referring to the gospel that was given to Jesus. But it says it was there at the time of your prophet with the Jews and Christians. That's what 7157 says. Yes. Read it. So what gospel did they have at the time of Muhammad that had this prophecy of Muhammad? I'm not sure. So then why are you changing the subject if you can't answer the questions? I was talking about Tawheed. You went to John. So I'm going to answer you if you're not sure. So you want to stay on Tawheed now? You went to John. So I can't even show you what gospel that is because you're not sure. Well, God, you tell me what gospel, what was it? According to Sirat Rasulullah by Ibn Ishaq, it's the gospel of John. Page 653 in the English translation by Alfred Guillaume. Alfred Guillaume translated Sirat Rasulullah by Ibn Ishaq in English. And in page, I'm sorry, not page 653, pages 103 to 104. Pages 103 to 104, there Ibn Ishaq says, that John wrote down the gospel that God gave to Jesus for the followers of the gospel, in which there's a description of your prophet. And there he quotes John chapter 15, verses 23 to 16, verse 1. And Ibn Ishaq says, that's the gospel that's the that God gave that to God Jesus. Gave. We can hear okay. all and if we were to assume that that's the case, that it was the gospel of John, how can you... Be so sure that it's the same gospel of John that you have in, in your position today. I know that because it's Ibn Ishaq quotes John 15, 23, 16 to 1, and it's identical to what I have today. And secondly, there are copies of John before the time of your prophet that are identical to what I have now. So when did the change take place? I don't know. I don't know what they had back then okay. versus what they have so now. So then let's keep but it simple. I, let's go to Tawheed. What, what, what I do know is that there were many Christians like Suhe the Rumi, like the Nijis of Ethiopia who were Christian and they became Muslim. And how do so, you know that? Because it's in the biography of the Rasulullah. The, the one I just read for you that said that John wrote down the gospel of Jesus? I'm not disputing that. What I'm saying is there were Christians who became Muslims okay, and there are Christians who came. You're not hearing yourself. Christians. So you admit John's gospel is the gospel of Jesus then? Like I said, the gospel refers to the gospel given to Jesus. The gospel that I told you is the gospel of Jesus, John, John wrote, comes from the biography that you just appealed to to prove that Christians became Muslims. The same Sirat Rasulullah that told you Christians became Muslims is the same Sirat Rasulullah that says John's gospel is the gospel that God gave to Jesus. Okay, I'm not disputing that. So you admit John's gospel is the gospel of Jesus? But I'm not saying that it's 100% accurate though. Ibn Ishaq did not say it's not 100% accurate. Don't spin it. He didn't say it was either. No, he said it's the gospel that God gave to Jesus. Okay, but that's what he said. But what I'm telling you is we don't know it, that that's 100% accurate because it's not even yes, in the Yes, we do, language. because we have copies. Is it, is we, have it, copies. Yeah, we, we have copies of John before, during, and after Muhammad that are identical to what we read today. Jesus spoke in Hebrew. So, so wait, hold on. So what, what language does Jesus speak in your Quran? Jesus spoke in Hebrew. In your Quran, what language is he speaking? I don't understand the question. Doesn't your Quran quote Jesus and the disciples? Yes. What language does the Quran have them speaking? Arabic. But Jesus didn't speak it's, Arabic. Jesus did not speak Jesus. Arabic. I understand that, but those are the words of Allah telling us what Stop Jesus Stop begging said. the question. We don't believe Allah revealed any book because we don't believe Allah is God. You just destroyed your argument because you just said Jesus spoke Hebrew, therefore it should be in Hebrew. But when your Quran quotes Jesus in Arabic, a language he didn't speak, now it's okay because Allah revealed it. If I'm telling a story, now my language is English, and someone else spoke a different language, I'm going to tell it in English. So then, then change your argument. Mean. John is writing to Greeks in Greek. So well, change your argument. You do not have the original gospel of Jesus that's in Hebrew. That's my point. You, 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 my friend, the, you, you don't need me. the original gospel of Jesus. Jesus didn't write down anything. He preached and lived the gospel and his followers wrote it down. That's what Ibn Ishaq said. You well, Ibn Ishaq again? Down either. But his companions wrote down what he said in okay, Arabic. But you're, which you're not listening. He Isa, stop so going in a thousand directions. Please focus. Ibn Ishaq said, John wrote down the gospel of Jesus. And what John wrote was in Greek, not Hebrew. Okay, now let's come back to Tawheed. Because okay. you changed the subject because you ran from Tawheed. Okay. No. Okay, do you, do you want to read chapter Surah the Nisa, chapter 4, 171? Or do you want us to read it for you? You can read it. Okay, go to Surah the Nisa, chapter 4, verse 171 now. Surah the Nisa? Yeah. And which verse? 171. All right. O oh, people of the scripture, do not exaggerate in your religion and do not say about God except. Accept the truth. 
the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, is the messenger of God and his word that he conveyed to Mary and a spirit from him. Can we so pause, right there, in, pause right there because yeah. I want to ask a question. He just read it in Arabic and English. It says, Jesus is karimatuhu el qaha illa maryam. The, his word, Allah's word sent down to Mary, ruh and min, ruh and min, a spirit from him. Now, do you agree that Jesus is God's word that came down to Mary according to this verse? That's what the Quran says. So, Good. Of so you agree with that? Yeah. And he came as a spirit from Allah because that makes sense, right? Because he only became flesh when he's born of Mary, right? Yeah, but you have to understand what the word of Allah means. Okay, it the says way, the word the that came down. is different than how we interpret it. We interpret it as meaning that Allah said be, and then he was. That's how you like to interpret be. it. So here that we go again. Isa, the, yeah. I don't care how you interpret it. Read the verse again. It says his word that came down. It didn't say he said be, and he came to exist in Mary's womb. It says his word that came down. Well, like I said, we have to look at the tafsir of Ibn Kathir because you can't interpret the verse for us. Is Ibn Kathir, right do you say la ilaha illallah? Ibn Kathir Rasulullah? No, of course not. You know that. Okay, Let me so can you stop boring yeah. me with Ibn Kathir who comes 700 years later? And because I'll use Ibn Kathir against you in a minute. Can you explain the Arabic? Because you said Arabic, right? He read the Arabic for you. The Arabic says, Karimatuhu el qaha illa maryam. His word that came down, not the word that created him in the womb. Okay, you're saying the word that al qaha does not mean come down, by the way. Yes, it does. It means, it means to throw something. Call even better. Throw, 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 throw down, right? Uh, even better. Anzal. Anzal means send down. Okay, al even means better. To, to throw something. So, so believe, wait, wait, listen to yourself. So Allah threw Jesus down. Good. Threw him down from where? Okay, hold on. One second. So the word he said, be, and he was. That's not and what it says in 4171. Show me where it says be and he was in 4171. That's not what it said. 4171? Let me just get one, one second. Okay, I'll read it. 4171. Surat the Nisa 171. Okay. All people of scripture do not exaggerate in your religion. Do not say about God except the truth. The Messiah Jesus, the Son of Mary, is the messenger of God and his word that he conveyed to Mary and the spirit from him. Isa, read that again slowly. What did it say about Jesus? A spirit from him. So believe. Oh, no, sorry. read the first part before uh, spirit from Jesus. him. Jesus, the son of Mary, is the messenger of God and his word that he conveyed to Mary. Thank you. There you go. Where does it say? And he is the creation of Allah's word. Kun fayakun. It does not say that in this verse here. And it says he came as a spirit from him. So how did he come as a spirit from him if he wasn't already with him as a spirit that then came from him into Mary? Okay. So the belief in Islam is that Jesus is the creation of Allah. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, there's a lot of doubt because the Quran just contradicted you. That's how you interpret it. That's that's what I'm trying to tell okay, you. Okay, then refute you me from the text. Can, can, I, can I please speak? Okay. Well, if you you're going to refute me from the text, you can on, speak all on. you want. Hold on. Let me, let me just speak because I can't speak. I can't get my point across. Go ahead. Okay. The whole point I'm trying to make is this Quran is not trying to force each and every human being to be Muslim. It's giving you the scripture. It's giving you the verses. And it's saying, look, the choice is up to you. You can believe it or you can disbelieve. What's that so got to do with answering the question? I'm trying to ask a question. Okay. So if answer, someone please. wants to believe, we can explain it so that they can understand what this verse means. If you don't accept that explanation, then you just well, you'll be a disbeliever, and that's the end of the story. No, what? So wait, you can't, you're you saying can't, it's up to you to explain it? You what you're trying to do is you're trying to disprove Islam, and you can't do that. All well, you can do is you can disbelieve. And you can influence other people to disbelieve, but you can't disprove Islam because we know how to interpret our verses. Did you notice I gave you a chance to rant and you didn't answer my question? This is why I keep cutting out because I know you're going to do this. Show me from your Quran where it says Jesus is God's word because Allah created him by his command. Kun kun. Okay, this verse right here explains that, that Jesus is the word. That came oh, down, right? It doesn't say sent down. It says, Thrown down. It says even, he's even more powerful, that he right? conveyed to Mary. Can, wait, wait, didn't you just say it says throw down? But so you go with the word convey now. But earlier you said no, it means throw down. Now you want to go with convey. Well, yeah, the word al the, by itself is to throw something. The but Arabic, the is, Arabic is, is al qaha. Al he admitted. Al he said he didn't say nataqaha. Al qaha. There is a difference. Yeah, he admits it means to throw down. So when he was thrown down, it says he was thrown down as a spirit from him, right? Yeah, but the Muslims right. believe that he is the messenger of Allah. But he's more than that because he's the word of Allah and spirit of Allah. In fact, if we want to go now to your tradition, two of the names given to Isa in Islamic tradition is Karimat Allah, Ruh Allah. 
Agreed? Okay, so can I ask can I ask you a question now? You guys me my question. Can I ask you a question now? You're, so you're admitting you can't defend Tohi, so we can change the, so change the subject. I'll change it, but admit you can't defend Tohi. I can't defend Tohi. So but why are you changing the subject? Need to finish the, point. Conversation. I mean, the question I'm going to ask you is yeah. to defend Tohi. I'm asking you, are you trying to say that Jesus is God? I'm saying your Quran says he's the eternal word, and just like the Quran is supposed to be eternal, if Jesus is uncreated, then that means he's not a creature. He must be God and one with God. But you can't use the Quran to try to prove your your belief that Jesus sure is God. Sure I can. I just did. We know how to, first of all, you have to be knowledgeable in Arabic. You have to be, you have to have the Quran memorized. You have to. Have you memorized all the Quran? Do you, what, what's your qualifications for Arabic? Have you memorized all the Quran? No, I'm saying for you. To so why are you, to, why are you engaging me in discussion? Why don't you leave? Let me ask you a question. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. Why are you here? Why don't you leave? You're not qualified to be talking about Deen. And you said you haven't memorized it. So why are you here? I'm saying you want to use the Quran to try and prove that Jesus is God or the Son of God. You have to at least have a good grasp of the Arabic language. What's, what is your qualification? No, that's not what you said. You said memorize the Quran. No, no, no. You said memorize the Quran in Arabic. So now if you want to prove to me Tawheed is true, you must memorize the Quran in Arabic and the Hadiths in no, Arabic, no, none no, of which no. you've done. I'm saying, for, okay, the scholars in Islam, scholars. Are you a scholar? have the most right to speak about Islam. Okay, are you a Deep? scholar? No, I'm not a scholar. So you have no right to speak about Islam. Why are you here? Not but I'm, I have a right, of course. You have everyone has a right to speak whatever they believe. But I'm so why did you go on another tangent? To prove no, that no. the Quran is that's a big uh, assumption. Or, or so big let, let's let's take what you just said, because I want everyone to hear it. The only way you can be qualified to ever use the Quran is if you memorize it in Arabic and memorize no, that. I didn't say that. I did not. Okay, say Okay, so then let's I'm get off the tangent. Let's go it, back it, to the point. It, I'm, I'm asking you a question. What is your qualification in Arabic? Do you have a bachelor's degree? I don't need to have, have a qualification because the Quran claims that it is plain and fully detailed. But you, you're understand. trying to explain the Quran in a way that's different than we explain it. So if you're going to do that, you okay, have to now, have Isa, can you be honest and admit? Can you be honest and admit that even your scholars, even if you go to Tabari and Qurtubi and Ibn Kathir, you will note that even when they explain a verse of the Quran, they'll give you multiple explanations by multiple companions of Muhammad or the Tabi'in because there isn't one definite explanation of the verses. In fact, I'll give you just any verse. I'll say, go to this verse, br bring up Tabari, and it'll give you at least three and four ver explanations of a verse. What are you talking about? I agree. About? I agree. I say it again? Yes, that's true. So notice what you just said. Even if I go to your scholars, they're going to tell me, well, this verse can mean this according to so-and-so, but then it also can mean this according to someone else, but it also can mean this according to someone else, Allahu Adam. How okay. am I getting clarity if your scholars can't even agree what the verse exactly means? You just disproved your whole point. No, I believe it's proved your appeal to turn, scholars, not me. You're not listening. If we, take this, if we take this verse, for example, and let's say we have three different opinions about what it means. None of those opinions will tell you that this means that Jesus always existed and he came down. Sure, of course they won't the say God. that. But can I tell you what Ibn Kathir said? Do you know why chapter 3 verse 7 was revealed, supposedly? Where it says that there are verses that are clear. They're the mother of the book and there are verses that are unclear. And those who are perverted at heart focus on the unclear passages, even though only Allah knows their meaning. Chapter 3 verse 7. You know why that was revealed? Well, I was revealed. According to Ibn Kathir and Tabari, because the Christians from Najran used the verse I just used against you. They used it against Muhammad. They said, wait, Muhammad, you say Isa is karimat Allah, ruh Allah. Therefore, you just prove Jesus is God. Because if he's the word and spirit, that means he existed before he became flesh. You know what your prophet okay. said? He said, oh, that's an unclear verse. No one knows what it means except Allah. Stop using it. He got okay, busted. Okay, can I ask you a question? Sure. Using that, that very same the very same situation that you're describing, where the delegation from that tribe of Christians came to Medina, after they debated, Prophet Muhammad gave them a clear solution. He said, look. No, he didn't. That's, let, let me finish. Let me so finish. finish. He didn't because you're he not said, listening. Go ahead. Let me, can I finish? Can I finish? What? He said, let us both sincerely pray to God that whosoever mm -hmm. lying that Allah sent his curse down upon them and they refused <sighs> okay to do this. no I know why they refused I have your context notice you change the subject again let's go back it's to three seven you, you talk about the let's I'm go afraid, back right? to three seven Isa you're wasting my time let's go back to three seven why is it when your prophet got busted why, why is it when your prophet got busted by the Christians and they use his own words that Jesus is the word and spirit of God to prove he's God only then your prophet came with the excuse, well, there are some verses that are unclear. No one knows what they mean. Why is it only when he got busted did he come up with that excuse? Okay, let me go to Tafsir the Qadir. You said it's chapter 3. Verse 7. Verse 7. Read. I have it here with me, but go ahead. I'll let you read it. Okay, you can read it. Go ahead. Okay, let me get it for you then. Are you reading English or Arabic? 
English. Hold on a second, buddy. Let me pop it up from my article where I quote him. And you can confirm that I'm quoting him accurately. I'm not misquoting him. There you go. All right. Here it says, because each paragraph, he has an explanation. It says, they follow that which is not entirely clear thereof, meaning they refer to the mutashabih, because they are able to alter its meaning to conform with their false interpretation, since the wordings of the mutashabihat encompass such a wide area of meanings. As for the muhkam ayat, they cannot be altered because they are clear and thus constitute unequivocal proof against the misguided people. This is why Allah said, seeking al-fitna, and now Ibn Kathir, meaning they seek to misguide their following by pretending to prove their innovation by relying on the Quran, meaning the mutashabiha of it, but this is proof against and not for them. For instance, Christians might claim that Isa is divine because the Quran states that he is Ruh Allah and his word which he gave to Mary. All the while ignoring Allah's statements, he was no more than a servant. We granted our favor to him. Verily, the likeness of Isa before Allah is the likeness of Adam. He created him from dust, then he said to him, be, and he was. So do you agree that chapter 3 verse 7 has in mind the statement that Jesus is the word of God and the spirit of God, which Christians were using to prove Jesus is divine. Do you agree this is what it's referring to? Yes. Say it again? Yes, I agree. Okay, okay now two things. Didn't you just say to me that Jesus is the word of God because he's created by the command of God, right? Because he's created by the same, by Allah saying be. That's what you said, right? Yeah. You just contradict the Quran because Allah said those verses, only Allah knows what they mean. How did you know what it means? Because when Allah wants to create something, he says, be, and it is. You didn't hear, hear my question. See, Isa, pretend you're hearing me. Chapter 3, verse 7 says, those unclear verses, only Allah knows what they mean, no one else. But you just said, you know what it means for Jesus to be the word of God. But Allah just said, that's an unclear verse. No one knows what it means except Allah. How do you know what it means then? There are other places in the Quran where Allah describes how he created Jesus, not just this verse. No, it doesn't and describe Allah it. But can you answer the question for me? When... The Christians said, Muhammad, you say Jesus is the word of Allah and the spirit of Allah. That proves he's divine. He's not created. Then the response from your God, because you believe Allah revealed it. Those are unclear verses. Don't use them because no one knows what they mean except Allah. But you just told us that Jesus is the word of God because Allah created him by his command. That means you know the meaning, but Allah says no one knows that what it means. So how do you know what it means? Okay, so you're using two different verses to try to prove your argument. Okay. No, that's three verse this, seven. This says, for example, they might use this to try to prove that Jesus is Okay, let me quote Tabari because you know, you're trying to switch it. He's a law or the son of God. Okay, like but this. hold on. Okay. Weren't you appealing to Ibn Kathir to me all this time? Now that Ibn Kathir says that this is an example of unclear verse, Ibn Kathir is wrong? You're the one who no, kept I'm going Ibn Kathir. Wrong. No, I'm not saying he's wrong. So do you agree I'm, it's an I'm unclear verse? When I said that Jesus was the word, is the word of the law because Allah said be and he was, that's not from this verse. It could be from you want to bet? Let me quote Qadri. You want to bet? It is Qadri. This is Tafsir Qadri on 3 7. Let me read it for you. Ready? Yes. Opinion. Some of them said this verse referred to the Christian delegation from Najran, which came to the Messenger of God to debate with him over what they debated and argue with him, saying, Do you not claim that Jesus is the Spirit of God in his word? They interpreted these words in a manner consistent with their statement of disbelief. On account of those who said that, Al-Muthana, Ibn Ishaq, Ibn Abi Jafir, his father, Al-Rabbi, they were resolute, meaning the Christian delegation from Najran that came to the Messenger of God, and they argued with the Prophet, saying, do you not claim that Jesus is the Word of God and a spirit from him? The Prophet replied, but of course. They said, this is sufficient for us. Then God, mighty and majestic, is he sent down, but those in whose hearts is doubt pursue that which is ambiguous of it, seeking to cause dissension. Then God, majestic is his phrase, sent down the verse beginning with truly the likeness of Jesus with respect to God is as the likeness of Adam. So Tabari says 3.7 was specifically sent down because the Christians were using the ayat that said Jesus is the word of Allah and a spirit from him. Okay. So now let me ask you again. Since Ibn Kathir and Tabari agree, or at least quote people that agree, chapter 3 verse 7, which refers to unclear verses, include the verse where Jesus is said to be the word of Allah and a spirit from him. That is an unclear, ver unclear verse. Only Allah knows what it means. So then do you now repent of telling me what it means when no one knows what it means except Allah? It doesn't say no one knows what it means except for Allah. That's, that's Can I read chapter? Okay, okay. Uh, do me a favor. I'll read 3 verse 7 for him because he's ignoring everything we're saying. Read 3 verse 7 to see if it says no one knows what it means except Allah. Chapter 3 verse 7. All right, you keep saying it. Right. Let's read. Surah Al-Imran. I'm going to read it in Arabic first and then English. Arabic verse 7. هو الذي أنزل عليك الكتاب منه آيات محكمات 
هن أم الكتاب وأخر متشابهات فأما الذين في قلوبهم زيغ فيتبعون ما تشابه من ابتغاء الفتنة وابتغاء تأويله وما يعلم تأويله إلا الله والراسخون في العلم يقولون آمنا به كل من عند ربنا وما يذكر إلا أولو الألباب English It is he who revealed to you the book Some of its verses are definitive They are the foundation of the book And others are unspecific As for those in whose hearts is deviation They follow the unspecific part Seeking dissent And seeking to derive an interpretation But none knows its interpretation Except Allah and those firmly rooted in knowledge. They say, we believe in it, all is from our Lord, but none recollects except those with understanding. So why did you just tell us? It doesn't say that. It says none knows its interpretation except Allah and... No, that's not what the Arabic says. Sir. It says, and, and those who possess knowledge not. say, we believe all of it, finish it. That's what the verse says. And those who have knowledge say, we believe in all of it. It doesn't say those with knowledge also know. It says those who have knowledge say, we believe in all of it, the clear and unclear. Okay, that does not exclude that they would say, we believe in it, all of it is from our Lord. Okay, what does that got to do with the point I was making? That the You're unclear trying to verses, say none knows the meaning except for God. And that's that's not true because those who have knowledge know the meaning. That's not what that verse says. Now, interestingly, you just proved the corruption of the Quran because there is a qira, a different reading that does read that way. But the reading that is in your 1924 Cairo Egyptian goes with the Hafs reading, which says none knows its meaning except Allah. And those possessed of knowledge say we believe in all of it. It is from our Lord. Okay, but it says here's and those and those firmly rooted in knowledge. Finish it. So. No, no, don't stop. Then stop there. Finish it. Read they it. Say, say, we believe in it. All is from our Lord. So read that part again. And those possess the knowledge. What? Read it as a full sentence. Not stop it. I didn't. I didn't intend to stop. But okay, read, read it, it again. Fine. But none knows its interpretation except God. And those firmly rooted in knowledge say, we believe in it. All is Thank from you. our Lord. You just made my case. Okay, for the second argument, let's say I agree with you. I make your case. Well, you have to agree with me because no. you just read the English translation. No, the I, and I, part. I hold on. And. It says and. and okay, let's go with your interpretation. But, let me now read it. The way, it Isa, but, let me okay, read it the way you read it. Please, let me read it the way you read it. None knows its interpretation except Allah, and those who possess knowledge say, We believe in all of it is from our Lord. So now you have Allah and those possessed of knowledge saying, we believe in all of it. It is from our Lord. So your God, Allah, with those who possess knowledge, is now saying, I believe in all of the Quran. It's because it's from my Lord. See what no, you just did? It, it says, yeah, cool alone. That means they. Okay, but uh, like but I said, I'll, I'll give it to you. Okay, fine. Okay. I don't, so, don't want to yeah. stay on this argument. What I'm, what I'm asking you is, why did that delegation from that of Christians, why did they refuse to gather with the Prophet Muhammad and sincerely pray to God that whoever is lying, that the curse of Allah or God comes down very easy. Why they refuse? Because, That's my question. Well, very easy. Number one, that is that is an argument of losers. When you get humiliated and you can't be... <clears throat> You can't defend your argument, then you invoke Allah's curse. See, that's the cowardly way out. Someone who's that's, winning that's an argument, let me finish the point. You want me to finish the point or you want to chime yeah. in? Someone yeah. who's winning the argument doesn't need to invoke Allah's curse because I'm already schooling you and I'm humiliating you. It's only you when you get humiliated need to invoke the curse of your God to scare me. That's number one. That shows your prophet was losing badly. But they have nothing to lose. Okay, well, no, well, let me finish. And then the same tradition say the reason why they didn't take up the curse, it's not because they're afraid of your God. It's because they said, if Muhammad gets the upper hand, then he will come and attack us and kill us. So it's better that we pay jizya because your prophet had threatened them, sent them a letter saying, you better accept Islam or pay jizya or we will fight you. So they realized if we end up not submitting to him and paying jizya, that he's going to come and attack us and take our women and rape them and murder us and enslave our children. Better we pay the jizya. That's what your own tradition says. Okay. So now can we stop this cursing? Because it only shows how weak your position is. Can we get back to the issue? Number one, no one knows what it means except Allah. So don't tell me what that verse means. And number two, here's my question you didn't answer. Why is it that only after your prophet got caught using his own words against him, did he come up with chapter three, verse seven? Why didn't your prophet say before the Christians came and said, hey, Muhammad, you say Jesus, Lord of God, Spirit of God. Yes, you just proved he's divine. It's only after they confronted him with the verse that he came up with, hey, these are unclear verses. Stop using them. Why is it he only came up with this excuse after he got busted? Why did he come up with that verse before it was used against him? Okay, I can answer that question very easily. 
But the Quran, the Quran was revealed not all at one time. It was revealed as 